Uh, today's class is uh, age and experience, and um, uh, us enduring in this truth. All right. So let's begin in the book of. Hmm. Not sure. Sirach 8. The book of Sirach in the Apocrypha. For those, are we on Periscope, brothers? For those that are watching on some Periscope for the first time, pens and papers, um, hopefully you can uh, gain some type of understanding. Um, Let's start in the book of Sirach, chapter 8, and I want to begin in verse 8. The book of Sirach, chapter 8, and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction, and in how to serve great men with ease. Let's read that one more time. Sirach, chapter 8, and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. It says... Despise not the discourse of the wise. Don't hate the discourse of a wise man. Now, here's the thing. How do you know who's a wise man? You know, people could sound good like they're wise. You know, you have a lot of people that are very excellent speakers. Farrakhan is one. Al Sharpton is one. There's many brothers out there. Um, T.D. Jakes. Uh, a lot of people that are, are well-spoken individuals. But how would you know who is the wise person? Uh, the Bible will give you the blueprints on how you discern that. And we're going to get to that in a second. But first, let's begin with not despising the discourse of the wise. But it says, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. What is a proverb? Proverb is a wise saying. Wise sayings not, will come normally from people who have experience. Why is it considered a wise saying? Because more than likely, either they've been through it in their lives, or uh, that they're able to give you um, some type of counsel or guidance on what you should and should not do. So it says, uh, acquaint thyself with their proverbs, for from them thou shalt learn instruction. But watch this. From them, you're going to learn instruction. And the second part? And how to serve great men with ease. They would teach you how to serve great men with ease. So, with age and experience. Uh, nobody will be a good leader if they are not a good follower. I'll repeat that. There's no way you would be a efficient or a good leader without learning to first follow. Here's one step in learning how to follow. James. Now I want to say this. Do not for a second mix up your earthly age um, with your spiritual age. All right? Two different things. You have people who might be up in age, 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, just coming to truth a year, two, three, Four, um, don't confuse that with your earthly age. Now, along with, sorry, I can't find James. Along with your earthly age um, will come, along with your earthly age, will come some type of life experiences. So, example, closer? Okay. Along with your earthly age will come some type of life experience. All right, so I want you to understand that. If you are, you know, an adult, married, children, you know, 30s, 40s, I wouldn't suggest you counsel with a 20-year-old who's single on marriage. No. They can't give you, a, you know, they, they can't give you any wise saying. Now, they might be able to give you scripture, but how to navigate, they don't have the experience. But back to... How to Learn to Serve Men with Ease. We're going to begin in the book of James, chapter 1, and I want to read verse 19. The book of James, chapter 1, and verse 19. 
Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Yes, go ahead. Slow to wrath. So listen to what James, in his epistle, he said. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Uh, to learn how to serve men with, uh, great men with ease, you have to be willing to listen and speak less. You ha the only way you're going to learn is if you're listening. But if you're always talking... You always think you have a proverb, you have something to say. It's going to be very hard to gain any kind of wisdom. Swift to hear, slow to speak. Drop that. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 5. Five, verse 11. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, and verse 11. Be swift to hear, and let thy life be sincere. It says, be swift to hear... And let thy life be sincere. Read on. And with patience give answer. And with patience, learn to be patience. Learn to be patient to give an answer. Read on. Verse 12. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Okay, age and experience. If you don't know something and you don't have an answer, don't answer. Don't make it up. There's no shame in going to get an answer for something that you're uncertain of, all right? But with aged men come experience. There's, as, you know, you've been in it for a while. You should be able to answer uh, certain questions. You should get further along in understanding to give uh, instruction. Read on. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. And the tongue of a man will be his fall. Watch. If you lack experience, what's going to happen? You're going to run your mouth and say something you ought not to say. Mm -hmm. So, to learn to serve great men with ease, be swift to hear, slow to speak. Hear the discourse of the elders. For whatever reason, God has set up this nation to be built a certain way. And... Everybody has to answer to a hierarchy. I know some people move with the spirit of being uh, an individualite. They say they don't need to be taught. Uh, the spirit will teach them. It's not what the Bible says. When you read in the book of Acts, I believe it's 8, the, the unit. So, is that Acts 8? Go to real quick. Oh. The book of Acts, the eighth chapter. Mm, Acts 8, 30, 30. 30, yeah, that's it. The book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 30. Start verse 27. Verse 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopia, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for, for to worship, mm -hmm. was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? So Philip approached the uh, eunuch that was working uh, for Queen Candace of Ethiopia. Uh, he was coming to Jerusalem to come and worship. And Philip joined to him and said, do you understand what you're reading? At that moment, what we're going to read right the next verse is certainly he did not say, no, I'm waiting for the Spirit to guide me. I, I don't need your help. I know for myself. What did he say? And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? God, he said, how, sh how should I understand unless I'm taught? Everybody has to be taught. I don't know, this, this mind of I'm going to do it by myself is not how the scriptures move. It's not what Christ said. It's not what the scripture says. It's not the examples we have in the scriptures. So she, he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Read on. 
and he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Okay, read on. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So that's the scripture. I want to move on. Read on. 34. Verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? So he began to ask Philip, so who is this talking about? Because I don't know. I need to be taught. Read on. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So let me ask you a question. When Philip began to speak, what was the eunuch doing? Shut up. He was quiet. Okay, he was quiet. He was listening. Mm. One speak, the other listen. <laughs> he was listening. All right? So Bill, Philip, you know, so I, in this movement sometimes you have um, brothers and sisters that um, move as though it's an uh, it's, uh, um, open forum. You know, even on the street, you're out there teaching on the street, and somebody walk up, and all of a sudden they want to become a prophet and start teaching too. They want to expound. You know, this corner's been here. You could have t taken a corner someplace and you know do it. You haven't done it, but now I'm out here teaching, and now you no 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 no. There's one teacher, and the rest are students. So this man, no, he didn't knew he 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 knew he did not know the scriptures, or he did not explain it, and Philip began to expound to him. All right. So I'm going to go from there to 1 Peter 5. First Peter 5, verse 5. And we're going to come back up. Read. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So it says, likewise, you, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. He said, you younger men and women, submit yourself to the elder men and women. Submit yourself. How do you submit yourself? When you keep quiet, you listen. You always find out those that believe if they want to listen. And you know what kind of makes it a problem sometimes is because of your earthly age. You know, sometimes you say, you know, who is that person to tell? I'm a grown man. Now then guys, I you know, you're a newborn babe. It says submit yourself to the elders. Now watch what it says. Likewise, you younger submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Now when it says all of you, it's somewhat the elder too. You're subject to the young man. You are a servant. You're a servant to him. Your job is to be his servant. You're here to serve him. He's here to listen to you, and your job is to serve him. And guess what it says after that? And be clothed with humility. That goes for the teacher. He has to be clothed with the spirit of humility. He can't move in a posture of, it's all about me. You, you know, you need me. No. In the body and working it, uh, I've always said the strength of, of this nation being built it's not in the teachers. Our job is just to be mouthpiece to put the word out. The strength is within the body of the people. Because if they don't come to sit down and hear, then who are you teaching? It says, for God resists the proud and give grace unto the humble. God resists a proud spirit, a spirit that's not filled with humility. A young man that is not willing to be subject to an elder. And generally when people don't like what the elder's saying, they say, well, you're not my elder, I'm old enough, and I'm going to do my own thing, or whatever case they have. And generally it doesn't work like a child. A child grows up. He never leaves his parents. He might move out, but he never leaves his parents. Where does he go? He, he just moves on in life, but he's still, you know, attached to them. Um... And carry on. And this truth should be the same thing. You grow up spiritually, you don't leave. You might start another branch of a school or something like that, but you don't leave. 
But the problem is submitting yourselves one to another. So we're going to come back up. Um, we're going to come back here in a second. I want to go to Leviticus 19. So you hear me in a, in a real uh, laid back mood right now. My voice is because these brothers playing jazz. <laughs> and I, I'm not, it, you, you're going to get this from me today. Today is a really just phew, some good jazz music. Now I sound like I'm just real mellow. Mellow, mellow. Hey, let me try to tune this up. Cause oh God, shake that. All right, uh, Leviticus nineteen. I tell you that music really move you for real. Mm -hmm. Move David. Yeah, it changed my mood. Nineteen and verse thirty-two. The book of Leviticus, chapter nineteen and verse thirty-two. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. And honor the face of the old man, and fear the God, thy God. I the Bible God. says you are to rise up before the hoary head. The hoary head <clears throat> is talking about hoary means experience, gray hair, experienced man. Now, mind you, you can have gray hair. That don't mean you're experienced. You just got gray hair. Uh, but this experienced man, it tells you you're supposed to rise up before him. Now, um, one, one of these, uh, well, Here's go. So what it's saying, when, when an when a aged man walks in, the people should rise up out of respect. You know, that was an old custom people used to do back in days. You see somebody come in the house, or you, come, you, you stand up before the elders of the house. Uh, here, in Austin, brothers, this for you officers. You know, I never asked for that. I don't really care for that. Because if you got to tell everybody, bishop is on deck, then it's like they, they got to see and just say, oh, he just walked in. Hey, shalom. Forget about it. Ask why to I sit down because you don't really mean it. You may not know that you don't mean it, but I'm telling you, you don't mean it. <laughs> you don't mean it. You just stand up because you see me, not because, or you see an elder bishop, Nathaniel, not because you're instructed to. It should be based on this. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man. You know how you honor the face of the old man? You listen to him. That's what I said. I always list double honors and people tell me triple honors and you're my father figure. And I always just dismiss it and I laugh it off because that's normally falls into place when you see fit. And the minute I tell you something that you may not like, all of a sudden, who are you to tell me? Who are you? Who are you? That's when you're going to be put to that test. Do you really believe about this uh, uh, honor and elder and bishop? I'm like, pfft. How many times have people come before the uh, the leadership in marriage? People just do what they want to do, and then they pop up and say, "Oh, we got married." You, you, if I was your father, you would come and ask me. You would ask me for counsel. Is this the right woman? Is this the right man for me? And then after when the problem call problems start happening, then you want to call and you want counsel. And generally, at that point, I'm I make myself unavailable. Figure out life. Uh, not, not in all cases, but in some cases I do. I still try to help, but I'm, if I am going to help you, I'm going to tell you about yourself. <laughs> you open the door, I'm going to step into it. So it says, um, read that verse again. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 32. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man. And honor the face of the old man, read on. And fear thy God. I am the Lord. God said, if you fear him, you're going to honor the, the hoary head. You're going to bring honor to that man. You're gonna, you, a man of experience, you're going to rise up and you're going to honor him when he speaks to you. You're going to like, okay. Now, to honor him when he speaks to you don't mean you are brain dead now. Don't, don't misconstrue what I'm saying because you're supposed to know these scriptures. But if what they tell you is not sin, it's in your best interest to listen. And generally, for one reason and one reason only, because there's a very good possibility that either I've been through it, and I could tell you what not to do or what you should do, or I've seen it happen, and I've counseled it many times before. I, I don't think uh, there's not, so far I could say, there's very little situations anybody has come to me where I was stumped and said, well, I just don't know how, why. And it's not because of some great 
uh, epiphany is that I might have seen it 15, 20 times already. So I'm like, no, this is how it's going to work out. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to, don't parents do that with their children? I told you to do this. I'm telling you, you better listen. Either you hear or you're going to feel. You make your bed, you got to lie on it. I'm telling you, and then they don't listen, and then when it happens, you know, kids generally do dumb stuff. Like, I, I was warning you, I'm telling you what's going to happen. Watch this, Proverbs 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 31. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 31. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. Now, this, 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 this hoary head or this man, this aged man, he'll find his glory if it's found in righteousness. Because you got some old heads that just ain't righteous. <laughs> you got some old heads who got old beards. Big fringes, but they stuff ain't right. That's why it's it's in your it's 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 in your best interest to make sure you studied and you don't trust in him in a sense of um unsubstantiated scriptures or scriptures that you know or, or things that you know that is breaking God's laws. No, you don't do that. But in counsel in life situations, or definitely certainly concerning uh, scripture, that you concede. Even if you don't fully understand, but if you know it ain't sin, follow. We had a one time here, um, uh, Bishop Nathaniel brought out an order about um, us wearing uh, the purple. Everybody wearing purple, sisters come out there, you know, street clothes and put on this thing. And for the most part, brothers didn't buck. Sisters buck. Oh, why I got to wear that? You know, we're all individuals. And it was like, oh, gosh. This I don't know. I know, yeah, King, you might remember those days. I was like, this is a people's Just put on a fucking purple. If you, was working, if, you was working at, if you was working at friggin' um, daggone KFC, you put on a chicken suit. Yeah, but here, you friggin', it's, it's, you know, I don't, it's like you want to take a stand. Uh, now, when we look, because Bishop, uh, he was a, he's a visionary. You know, he, he's able to foresee how he wants to brand us, IUIC, to s distinguish us so we can really be in the forefront of this movement. You know, the people who were saying that didn't see that. But it's all right if they didn't see it. Just hear me. How about just shut up and just do it? It's not like he told you to put on a friggin' mini skirt and a garter belt. He told you cover up, just wear it. It's not this stuff ain't that deep. <laughs> but they argued it, and the ones who argue where they today, they all fizzled away. They all became individualites, and they're doing whatever they want to do, and they have amounted up to zero, zero. Why? Don't like to listen. There's always a smart. It says. Honor the, the, the honor of the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. If it be found in the way of righteousness. So you give him that honor. Why? Why do you give him that honor? Because he's moving righteously. Watch. We're going to read it. First Timothy's. Excuse me. Uh, back to First Timothy's. Oh, no. I'm sorry. First Timothy's 5. First Timothy 5, verse 17. The book of First Timothy, chapter 5, and verse 17. At the elders that rule well... The elders that rule well, that's found in righteousness... Be counted worthy of double honor. That you be, they be counted worthy of double honor. Read on. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Especially that what? They who labor in the word and doctrine. Yeah, if you see them laboring in the word and the doctrine, then you give them double honors. Not you just don't give them double honors and they're not doing anything. Oh, yeah, I just honor you because somebody said that you're somebody. No, I honor you because I see the work you're doing. I, I, hey, sidebar. This has nothing to do with this, but 
you understand this truth is about work, everybody. You know, you cut, you've been called into a vocation to work. <laughs> this ain't a club. This ain't a, this ain't a spa. This ain't a hangout. This is a job, real job, and the payment is the kingdom. You, you defer your payment for a later date, but you got to work for it. So, and um, uh, there's no retirement. You work until you die. It's just what it is. So anybody who doesn't want to do that, then um, best you make your exit because you'll waste your time here if you ain't laboring. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. You know double honor is? It's not saying double honor. Double honor. <laughs> uh, so wait one more time. Triple honor. Somebody told me that before. I'm like, you trying to bid off on you? Yeah. Quadruple honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quintuple honor. Quintuple honor. Yeah. <laughs> Hectuple honor. I know. Octuple honor. Yeah. Pi root. Bishop. Mm, you know. <laughs> Times 43. You know. Anyway, double honor is in your actions. And you're going to only know when that person is telling you something. And they're warning you. I've seen it so many times. You won't listen. I'm telling you, it's a bad move. Don't do that. Just listen to me. Why? Okay. Just don't. and and the people would. They, everybody is a prophet. Everybody knows. And then when it doesn't work, you could have saved yourself so much problems. I try to tell it to my children. I'm like, if you guys would just listen to me, damn, I will make your life so much easier because I could tell you what to navigate away from. Now, mind you, some of them going to do things because they just got to go through life. I get it. But I, I, can, I can mitigate or minimize what you're going through. In marriages, people want to get married. So if you would listen. I <coughs> Brother married a sister in the truth, felt she was spiritual, rushed to marriage. It is what it is. So now he has his own business. <clears throat> Uh, he's no, he's new couple, so he's trying to get his wife involved, let her know, you know, how the business dealings is going. You know, gonna put on his policies and everything. So one day he says, um, he was too ashamed to tell me at that moment. I wish he would have listened. But um, he said he went to this Facebook page, and he opened it up. It had a message from his wife. It had a message from him. He opened his own Facebook page and saw that he wrote a message to his wife saying, I love you. And then he saw his wife's response, I love you too, babe. He said, the problem was he never wrote that. So what you mean? He said, I never wrote to her, I love her. And she would, so she actually hacked into his Facebook page, asked him, wrote, I love you, logged out, <laughs> logged into hers, and wrote, I love you back. But, you know, he didn't tell me that at that moment. So he said, um... Um, his wife was a um, strapping sister, and he said he woke up, and he's a sizable brother too, he said he woke up and she was standing over him, looking down at him. <laughs> and he said, Bishop, he said, at that moment, when I looked up at her, he said, I got startled. And he said, in his mind, he was thinking, can I take her? And he said, I don't think so, not from this position. <laughs> he said, not from this position, I don't think I can take her. So here's the point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you should have asked. I would have, you know, she's a nut job. She's, you know, okay. I felt like uh, uh, Misery was standing over him. Exactly. He, 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 he said she was standing on him, looking down. He opened his eyes, and she's just looking down at him like this. And he just said, yeah, I wonder if I could take her. He said, nah, not from this position. I can't. He said, what's up, babe? What's up? You need something? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this up. Um... Especially them that, <laughs> especially them that labor in word and doctrine. Especially that's laboring. So, here you go. You're not sure. Look at the labors. What are they doing? Travel the world. What do they do? Travel the cities. In classes, counsel. After you start to say, okay, this man is worthy of me listening to him. Mm -hmm. That's why. Not just blanket, please. We're not looking for 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 imbeciles. Those are the ones you honor in word and in deed. And here comes the point. When a situation arises and they're telling you something, listen. How many times I told, my, I told you my boys, I said, even if you don't understand what I'm saying, if what I'm saying is not sin, 
Just do it. Trust me. It make your life a world easier. Just do it. Just do it. Just forget about it. One day you're going to understand why I said it. Today ain't the day. You know why? Because by default you're idiots. And you're only idiots because you're young. You know, you, you, don't, you lack the sprint, so you're going to do dumb things. I get that. I did it, and I did it more than likely older than you. But I'm not that person now, and I can tell you what can come from it. But a lot of times what happens, um, uh, people have their own mind. Let's go, where does the honor come from? Why do they get the honor where it comes from? Let's go to the book of Susanna, History of Susanna in the Apocrypha. Give me one second. History of Susanna. I want to read verse 1, chapter 1, verse... Uh, verse 50. Verse 50. The history of Susanna, chapter 1 and verse 50. Wherefore, all the people turned again in haste, and the elders said unto him, Come in, sit, de sit down among us, and shew it, seeing God hath given thee the honor of an elder. So listen to what they told. This is, those that don't know this history, this is during the Babylonian captivity. We're carried away into Babylon. Daniel was a young man. There's a situation between um, two elders that were trying to sleep with uh, another man's wife. Um, and Daniel was able to weed through their BS and um, uh, expose them as, um, as sinners. So the people said, they came to understand, seeing that God has given thee the honor of an elder. When it says God has given him, Daniel, as a young man, the honor of an elder, meaning Daniel's understanding and the way he operated was evident that the Spirit of God was upon him. Now, it wasn't Daniel saying that about himself. People saw. So I always tell brother, when they want rank, here's one way you get rank. And I don't mean rank from me or one of the leadership here. Rank in the eyesight of God. You move up. is by your wisdom and how you operate. You learn how to serve great men with ease. If you or that man has moved like that, now there was elders here that he was talking to, but he knew how to move where he still respected them, but the Spirit of God was on him. That was very similar with Timothy. When, Tim, when Paul told Timothy, let no man despise their youth. So we're not of the mind that you're a young man. Now, mind you, Daniel was young in age, but Daniel was born in the truth. So don't think, because I asked somebody who came as truth um, it was under a year and started telling me about um, uh, old people migrated to Australia. And I'm like, no, well, the scripture said they came to this side of earth. And he made that his argument. And when I, t well, he came to me as a question, it seemed like. So I was explaining to him what we see in the scriptures. And he took offense, like, why you think you're the only one? I'm like, dude, you've been the truth maybe about 38 weeks. Uh, come on, you're joking? What, what was the end result with him? His son broke in the house found a vase on the mantle and thought it was cocaine and sniffed it and it was dog remains or? It was uh, dog ashes. It was dog ashes. Cremated ashes. Cremated ashes. This guy thought he scored. He thought he, thought he, he found the coca and he was, he was sniffing dog ashes. He's, he's, he's been in jail for nine years now. He used to be coming out soon, right? Yeah. He yeah, things coming out soon. I hope he, I hope he kicked that, that, um, that canine addiction. Yeah, and his father's friggin' in 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 uh, another stratosphere. Yeah, this guy's sniffing dog ashes. Yeah, so Daniel told him. Uh, Daniel, the people saw that he had he had wisdom. God has given him the wisdom and the honor of an elder. Why? Daniel had enough wherewithal, knowing how to operate. And we can say that with any young man. So you want to be raised up? Just the way you move will be evident that God is dealing with you. And when we see it, hey, the spirit of God is on him. You know, God has a purpose for this man 
to do something great in this, in this ministry. Um, let's go from that. Psalm 75. Now, I have all these uh, incidences that I've been through, I've seen in my life, and that's because of being around for a while. <laughs> you see things, you hear things, and you use them now as reference points to help bring out the word. So I want Psalms 75, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 75, and verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Right. God is the judge, and he's going to move the hearts of men to put up one and setteth down another. God is going to move the situation the way he sees fits. We're all pieces of this puzzle that we're building back his nation. And everybody is called into this truth in the time where God sees fit for his purpose. Now, here's the thing. I want you all to remember this. I want you all to remember this. You're going to be used. Every one of us are going to be used. If you're not used, you're useless. Now, you're going to be used on what you should be, or you're going to be used on what you shouldn't be. But you're going to be used. So, promote, promotion cometh from the Lord. He setteth up one, and he, he setteth up one, taketh down another. This is not man's going. This is not a man's movement. God put people in place for certain reasons. He put men with experience. Yes, let me use another analogy. Uh, when America was, um, was being stolen, uh, from Esau. The first wave of people he brought over here were who? He brought those warriors. They hit the ground, they hit the shores, they went and fought, fought, fought back old people, fought them, many of them lost their lives, and once they encroached onto the land and they, and they had a little foothold on the land, what came next after that? Then came the builders to build the city. They built it, they built it, they built it, and once you had the city built, and they had a place sitting there. What happened next? Then came the missionaries to bring Christianity. And they did that. And they did. There's a process is the point I'm trying to make. So in building this nation, God's going to bring in people. And they're going to be the elders. And they're gonna, then he's going to bring people who know technical skills. And he's going to keep on building until we all to collectively build God's kingdom or Christ's kingdom. But there's an order on how to do it. You don't bring the missionaries before you bring the soldiers. That don't work. You don't. You can't build unless you first set the groundwork. And the ones that were there first and set the groundwork, more likely they had a better pulse of the person who just got off the boat from Europe. Like, no, don't don't touch that plant. That'll kill you. You know. Yeah. Don't go over over there. That's where the enemy is at. So why don't we get that in this truth? Oh, I'm my own man. Well, go go ahead. Go ahead. Feel free. Good. Make a salad with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Back to First Peters. First Peters, chapter five, verse one. The book of First Peters, chapter five, and verse one. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. So listen to what Peter says. Peter says, whoa. Peter said, uh, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder. Peter said he's an elder also. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Listen to what Peter's saying. He's saying, I'm an elder. And I was a personal witness to the sufferings of Christ. What is he saying? I have a, I'm more experience than you. I actually walk with the man. Not in a pretentious way like he's better than anybody else, but I have, I have first-hand accounts of what happened. Everything else you're going to hear is going to be somebody giving you their second or third account. I'm telling you I'm an elder because I got experience. 
the witness of sufferings of Christ, and also the partakers of the glory that shall be revealed. And also, I'm going to be a partaker of the glory which shall be revealed. How does he know about the glory that's going to be revealed? Well, Christ told him. Read on. Verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Stop. What did Peter tell them to do? Feed the flock of God which is among you. Well, wouldn't Peter be a good example of telling people, feed the flock of God which is among you? Why would he be a good example as somebody saying it? Anybody in here? Uh, yeah, but something else. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, yes, 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 because he walked with Christ. Uh, all your answers is right, but think about it. Where did you hear that before? Feed the flock. Acts chapter 20 and 28. Nope. John, hold this. John 21. John 21, 16. The book of John, chapter 21 and verse 16. He saith to him again the second time. This, this he is Christ. Christ said to to Simon, which is Peter, a second time. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So who told him that? Christ. Christ told him to feed the sheep. So what Peter ended up doing now, he's an elder. He's just instructed him in which he was instructed. Now, unless you want to be that person to say, well, you know, Peter, I have an opinion. Oh, Jesus, man. Come on, man. Stop. He said, I, I was a witness. I have experience. And now I'm telling you to do what? Verse 2. Verse Peter 5 and 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. He's telling, all he's doing <laughs> is repeating what he was taught. He's just giving him counsel on what he's taught. Now, this would be sound counsel, being that the counsel he got, he got from God. He got from Christ himself. And then after him, the men that was raised up, when Peter's gone, is going to tell the people after them what? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. <laughs> and today, a thousand years later, we're going to say what? Feed my sheep. Just follow instructions. Blueprint is already there. It's already ready. You just got to follow the person before you, more than likely, is going to be the one to instruct you. If he's a good judge or a righteous man, he's going to instruct you to do the same thing. Feed the flock which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Right. Now, listen to what it says. I'm not going to go too far on this, but I just want you to think about this now. Feed the flock which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. What, is the, what does the word oversight mean? What does oversight mean? Can you look up the word oversight? <clears throat> oversight. Read it, can I? Oversight. Noun. The, uh, the, this is the second definition. The action of overseeing something. Okay. The act of overseeing something. He said, take the oversight. What is he saying? Be a watchman. Where did he learn that from? Wasn't that what Christ did? Mm -hmm. Wasn't Christ the watch? Didn't he seek, didn't he watch his example of Christ laboring for the people? When they came, he said, leave them alone, take me. Did he tell, did he tell them about not being a hireling, but being a shepherd? Mm -hmm. A hireling flees, but a shepherd's going to look out for the sheep. No greater love than a man to lay down. So all these examples he got as a young man under Christ now he's an elder, and now he's doing what? Tom, take the oversight. Not by what? Not by constraint. Not because you're forced. Not because you're forced, because Christ wasn't forced. Read on. 
but willingly, not for filthy lucre. Why but, did he say not for filthy lucre? Because that's what Christ didn't do for money. He's just telling them, he's just repeating what he's seen and he's learned. Listen, you can't do this for money, man. You got to take the oversight. You got to go out and feed the sheep. Read on. But of a ready mind. But of a ready mind. You got to want it. You got to be willing. If you love Christ, Christ, said, Christ, he said, if you love Christ, you're going to keep his commandments. Christ said, feed the people. Be there for them. So all he's rehearsing is what he himself has saw. And now that he's an elder now, he's left, he's what? Going to pass on the same message. But you can't take that message if the person who's listening is too busy talking. Well, I got something to say, you know, the scripture says, oh, God, just do this, man. Read on. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. He said, don't be a lord over God's heritage because he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees, how Christ got on them for doing what? Making merchandise out of the people. He said, don't be a lord over them. Read on. But being in samples to the flock. But being, ex be being examples to the flock. Being selfless, an example to the flock. Bear with me one second. Watch this. First, I'm not first. Uh, St. Mark chapter 10. Forty-three. The book of Mark, chapter 10, and verse 43. Start with verse 40, 42. Mark chapter 10, verse 42. But Jesus called them to him. But Ooh. Jesus called them to him. Okay, one second. One second. When it says Jesus called them to him, who's the them he called to him? The apostles. He called the apostles, Peter being one of them. Now watch what it says. And saith unto them, ye know that they were that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. Right, and a great one exercise authority over them. Read on. But so shall it not be among you. So what was Christ doing? Instruct them. Don't be like this. Don't make this be like you. Read on. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whoever is great among you you greater shall be your ministers. He said, those that are greatest amongst you are ministers to the people. So our job as leaders is to lead with servants to you. Nobody, don't ever follow a leader that's not willing to do what they ask you to do. First telltale sign. Do not follow a leader that's not willing to do what he's asking or haven't done what he's asking you to do. I will never follow anybody that ain't going to be on the front line tell me go out there and teach, and they ain't. I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. Show me the way. I learn. I learn by seeing. What are you going to do? I'm not doing that. Yo, no, no. So he says, the greatest amongst you are going to be what? Are going to be ministers or servants to you. Read on. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. And, so, and whoever's going to be chiefest, your life is a life of servitude to all. And that's why, you, that's why we talked about them that rule worthy, well in work. I I'm paraphrasing it wrong. How does it say again? Uh, in, in labor. Labor. Because the chief among you, they have to labor. They got to, guess what? They got to be everywhere. They got to be willing to travel, go out here, get the word out. They can't sit home, you know, one weekend, come back, back on the road. Because what? They got... God's heritage scattered all over the place. So let's go back now. So now when Peter's speaking now, what is Peter doing? He's learned under Christ, and now what is he doing? He's building on that foundation, and he's just repeating or what he's learned and or saw a leader doing. So he says, verse 3, 5 and 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, 
you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And when a chief shepherd shall, and, say, and be an example, but being example to the flock. I'm sorry. Uh, verse 3 again. I'm sorry. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. It says you don't be a lord over the heritage, meaning our job as leaders is not to try to, to lord over you, to put unreasonable burdens upon you, uh, to ask things of you that we're not willing to do, um, to, to make merchandise out of you for money, counsel you in directions where it's going to profit us, that we're just, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help guide you on your spiritual growth that you might achieve greatness to bring glory to Christ and maybe even achieve greatness far greater than we do. That's what every father wants to see in his child. You want to see a child do better than you do or that you've done. But you got to set the right things in place for them so they can do that. And that child also has to be able to, well, to be willing to listen so they can achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, then you receive the crown of glory. And when the chief shepherd appear, ye shall receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. So the point of it, we're doing this, not to lord over you, but when the chief shepherd appear, you can receive the crown. That's the point in what? <coughs> Listen to the elder over you. Listening. Uh, Luke 1, 17. And we're going to come right back here again. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Wait a second. And he shall go before him in the spirit of Elias. This is talking about uh, John the Baptist. He's going to have the spirit of Elijah on him. And his job is to do what? To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. What are the hearts of the fathers? The Bible. And it's going to turn it back to the children. So what does that mean he's going to be doing? He's going to be teaching them. He's going to be instructing them. And what are they going to be doing? The ones that want to be turned back, they're going to be listening. Read on. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Saying the same thing. Read on. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. His job is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what his job is. To make them prepared for the returning of Christ. That's the same thing we read over here back in 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Very simple concept to understand. But you know, like back then, you had people that resisted, that despised governments, that was a know-it-all, that said, I could do it. Already then, verse 5. Verse 5, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. It says, that, it says likewise, ye younger, so it told, it told the, the elders what they had to do. Now, likewise, ye youngers, submit yourselves unto the elder. Why does is, why is Peter have to explain this? Because we didn't move like that. Remember, he's talking to the, the, the scattered Israelites. We didn't move like that. The scattered Israelites, <clears throat> even the ones in Jerusalem, I can't just say them, but we didn't want to listen. So he had to say, listen, you guys listen. Pay attention. Likewise, you youngers. I'm telling the elders what to do now. Likewise, you youngers. Submit yourself one to another. And it says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Come on. Let go of the pride. Let go of the arrogancy. Stop being a know-it-all. 
Submit yourself to the elders. Yay, be subject one to another. Man, I'm telling you guys how to learn how to work together. Listen, you can't have an army. You can't, you know, you can't have a, 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 a you can't have an army if everybody's a general. General got to understand. I need these guys out there, so I'm gonna take care and make sure they're all right. They're fed. They're clothed. They're warm. They're, they have whatever they need so they can go out there. But I'm the I gotta I gotta actually know what decision to move the troops in. And then you can't everybody soldiers because then who's gonna lead? Somebody plays. Everybody plays a part. So it says subject one to another. Be clothed with the with humility, for God resists the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Read on. Humble, verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Why? Because you had someone who didn't want to live it. Listen, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If God said this is the order to follow, just follow it. And then he will exalt you in due time. You're going to grow. That's what makes a leader. A leader is a leader, is a person that learned to follow order, plain and simple. And what makes you a leader will be age and experience. And great leaders always, always conceded to the men that were over them, always. Show me one that did it in the scriptures. Read on. Casting all your care Upon him, for he careth for you. Casting your, all your cares upon him because his job is to care for you. Read on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Why does he say that now? Let me see who's thinking. Why does he say, why is the next line saying, be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who can answer that? Oh, I'm sorry. You hit it right ahead. Remember, when they spoke, they didn't speak abstract. This is not, you know, uh, some, you know, uh, bipolar thought process. Um, the next line, after he says that, about humbling down that he might exalt you, is be sober-minded, be clear-minded, because your mind may be convoluted to thinking, who are you to tell me this? I'm a man. Because remember, these people weren't children. They weren't like they were four. These, when, when you break up the churches in Ephesus and Galatia and uh, uh, Philippi, these were grown adults, too, that was there. It's telling these grown adults, listen, submit to the elder. And sometimes the elder could have been younger than you, like Timothy. He said, let no man despise that youth, Timothy. Remind me to get to that in a second. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But it says, be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is moving around and saying, who's that weak spot? Who's that person that don't like order. Who's that person who don't want to give honor unto the elder? Oh, that's him? Okay. I'm going to set up a situation where now he's going to get checked by him. And as soon as he get checked by him, watch. The, watch I'm going to move him. He ain't going to like what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He's going to have an attitude. And that's where my play is right now. Want to say something? Yeah. In other words, if you move, if you don't like being subject to somebody, like we all are, you are e you're a prey to the devil. You're an easy target. That's that, it's that simple. Because when you read it in its context, we always, you know, go straight to verse eight and read that. But what he's talking about here is talking about being in order, submitting to the younger men, submitting to the elders, likewise. So when you veer off from that order, you're a direct prey for the devil. Mm -hmm. You become subject to the devil. <laughs> you're going to be a subject. Like God said, you're going to be used for something. What you should do or what you should not do. Uh, it says. Verse 9. Verse 9. Whom resisteth steadfast in faith. It says, whom you better resist. You better submit, subdue that mind that's telling you, F him. Who the hell he think he talking to? You nigga, you know who I am? Who you think you are? You think you Ron O'Neill? Who you think you are? You telling me. <laughs> resist steadfast in the faith. Read on. 
knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Watch this. One second. Uh, go to First Corinthians ten. First Corinthians 10, now I'm First Corinthians 10, I want you, you're gonna read verse 13, but give me one second. I want to go back and read it real quick in First Peter 5. It says, Whom resist? Whom are you supposed to resist? The devil. Steadfast. Stay steadfast and resistant in the faith, in the faith of what the scriptures say. So do your own thoughts. Knowing that the same knowing that the same affliction, what's the affliction? Fall subject is accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. They're going through the same thing, but there's a difference. Watch this. I want you to read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There's no temptation or tribulation taken that's not common to men. Men in the world, men in truth, same temptation. We don't. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God is not going to put more on you that you're not able to bear. Why? Because then you could default to the scriptures. You know what? And I'm going to go about the order. That's what I'm talking about at this point. Watch out. Because the temptation is what? Why do I got to listen to him? Who the hell, who the hell is he? Who you think he think he know it all? We, we ain't prophets? That temptation is not common to It happens to man. In the world, people don't want to do it. You're doing your job. It's your boss. You've been hired for a job, and you're like, why, I gotta, why do I got to pack the boxes like that? Why can't I pack them? You know, he thinks he's man, aren't you just hired to do a job? Just do it. Your job ain't to think. Your job is just to pack the boxes. If I want you to pack them rows of five, just pack them rows of five. It'll be better if it's rows of four, possibly. But I want rows of five, damn it. You know, you won't do that at your job. You'll be like, yes, Mr. Man. Yeah, you want rows of five? I'll give you rows of five. You yes, know? Mr. Boss, man. Yeah. Yeah, you just do it. <laughs> Truth be different. Watch this. But watch how it ties in. You can see why the thought was why I'm using this. <clears throat> Read it through this entirety. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with the temptation also make a way to escape. Here's the way to escape your faith. If you believe, you're just going to humble down and say, okay. Now, why am I tying this in with order and following? Because it says back in, uh, stay where you are, don't go nowhere. It says back in 1 Peter, it says, verse 9, it was, yes. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in, in the world. Watch this. Then that same chapter I want you to jump up to verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. <laughs> That's why he said, don't be a murmur. I don't know why. And then you get destroyed right along with it. Why? Because you just don't want to, you're not steadfast in the faith. You become a murmurer. Here, now watch this. Read on. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, unto whom the ends of the world are come. We don't. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. If you think you stand, you better take heed lest you fall. Why does it say that? Back in First Peter, it says, be sober, be vigilant. Take heed lest you fall. Anybody understand where you understand where I'm tying them together? Mm -hmm. Very clear. Take heed lest you fall. Be sober minded. Be vigilant. 
All right, let's go back. Let's go back. I'm saying brothers have to understand, like the devil, he he likes disorder. The Most High works in order. So when you buck up against the order, it's because you have the devil on you. Uh, that makes sense to me. I think that's 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 Sounds that's right. There. That's money. All praises. That makes sense to me. You like you, if you like disorder, then you love the devil. Right. <laughs> if you like structure, Christ said he's not an author of confusion. There gotta be some kind of structure. The scriptures say that the, the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The, there's a there's something holy about discipline. When you don't like disciplining yourself or falling in subjects because you're evil. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm clear on that. Oh, baby, out there is clear on that. It ties together. Um, Second Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Oh yeah, Second Corinthians five and nine. The book of Second Corinthians, chapter five and verse nine. Wherefore we labor, that we, I'm sorry. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him, for we must all appear before. Be, when it says present or absent, means alive or dead. We we will be accepted of Him. Read on. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body. <laughs> nah, boy, I'm afraid of that. Is that every man going to receive what he done in his body, boy? We don't. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So verses 9 through 11. What is the one thing you think I want out of that? Three words. We persuade men. We persuade men. That's what I want. We persuade men. That's our job, to prepare you for the coming of the Lord. That's our job, to prepare you. It says, we, f we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the thing which, uh, things done in this body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So, we're trying to tell you, we're gonna, all going to answer for what we do in this life, man. So I need you to do what? Listen. Listen. You got to listen. You just got to listen. We're gonna pay. Knowing therefore that the terror, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Wherefore we got experience and know that we got a better pulse of the terror of God. Okay, let, let me help you try to paint that in. How many of you fully understand God gave David STDs? King David. How many of you fully understand God made us eat our children? God made us eat crap? God is going to kill us. But we ain't going to be dead, but we're going to be dead. But we're going to be punished and be dead, but not dead like you think dead. I don't know what death is. Right, me neither. You know, so you don't really think about that. We don't understand the fear of God. We, 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 we really don't fully understand the terror of God. But I can safely tell you, people who've been around a little longer have a better pulse of it, and we're trying to persuade you the terror of God. Because a lot of times we don't think, you know, it's like hodgepodge or, you know, like it's a fairy story in your mind. And he's going to come back, but he's not here now. But I don't know, but I do believe because Jeremy 28, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know, who's seen it? The big black guy's going to come out of the sky. And that's how young minds think. But our job is to prepare you and persuade you, therefore, because we understand or have a better understanding of the terror of God. So when you move when you move independent away from 
the word of God. What's up? Sorry. I apologize. Got to do this. So when you when you when you when you move away from the counsel that God has given you through the men that set up under you, you're out there alone in the world. You're out there alone. It says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. And we pray that we made manifest in your conscience, that you consider what we're telling you, that you consider what we're saying to you, for their job is to feed the flocks, to watch, to prepare your souls for the kingdom. Hebrews 13. 13, verse 17. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 17. Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Because they watch for what? For they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Yeah, so that's why I tell them to obey them to have rule over you. Because we watch for your souls. That we might give account, because we're going to have to give account in that day. Did we feed the sheep? Yes, God, we fed them. We fed them this word. They didn't like it, what, what you were serving, but we served them. You know, we gave it to them. They didn't eat. Some of them ate it up. All right. But we're going to say we did old jobs, or we should be saying we did old jobs, that we may give account, and that they may do it with joy, and that, and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. It's unprofitable for you, for you to do what? To not submit yourself unto them that have rule over you. It's like you have a child. I don't care how you're a parent and you have a child. You don't care if your child is 50 years old. That child is supposed to always be in submission to you with all due respect. Oh, I don't care. It don't matter how that child gets in their life. They're supposed to always be in submission to their parents. That they might have joints hit. Give me a second. Scripture. Give me a second. I don't know it, but I know it. Let's go. Sirach. I forgot how it goes. Sirach 3. Watch this. Sirach 3, uh, watch this. Uh, I want you 3 and 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Read on. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. So it says that you may be saved. The father has given honor of the father over the children. The honor is the father rules over the child. The mother rules over the child. They instruct the child. Now jump on down to verse 5. Verse 5. No, um. Yeah, go ahead. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. So whoever honors his father, meaning what? How you honor your father? You obey them. You learn to be a good follower, and then when you have children, you will have joy in them. But if you wasn't a good child that didn't listen, God said, you're not going to be a good father. You're not going to have joy in your children. Because when you was a child, you didn't follow suit. You didn't listen. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. What's the difference in this truth? I'm grown. Huh? I'm grown. I'm grown. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? That, that last part of that only will manifest when you become a father. You say, damn, I should have listened. I should have listened to not this little, this little monster of a child I have right here. 
didn't listen. Sometimes I'd be like saying, I guess, Lord, you pay. You know, let me say this. Mind you, I was in the world, but I believe when I was a child, I wasn't really a bad child. I wasn't really bad. I didn't listen, but I wasn't bad. <laughs> that means I was bad. But um, now sometimes I look back at life and I'm saying, yeah, I guess this is what you're trying to show me now, Lord. Because, boy, the freaking heads are like brick. Damn, they're like, I'm like, was I that stupid when I was that young? I couldn't have been that stupid. No, nah, I couldn't have been that stupid. God said, Negro, you were stupid. You was an African American. Yeah, <laughs> stupid as hell. Stupid as hell. <laughs> but the point, <laughs> but the point is back in Hebrews, for it is profitable to you to listen. It's profitable for you to listen. For you. And people took it to a point where no, I don't know it. That you know, you believe you, you you've learned enough scriptures that you recited and now you're full grown in your spirit. You're never full grown. Anybody ever watch Chinese movies? When the master taught his, his students the art, it was always that one rebellious student that decided I can beat my master. But all the other students always respected him. Even when they became master themselves, they always stayed and respected their master, except that one little student that was like, hell no. Not knowing the master had a death lock that he never taught him. That's right into the arm. Freaking guy passed out. I said, yeah, you know, I taught you everything, but I didn't give you all of it. I said, yeah. <laughs> that like that. Uh, but, you know, in this truth, we're going to teach you, at least for me and, and, and the thing and all of us, we're going to teach you everything, you know, everything I know. And I tell you now, and I keep on saying to you younger brothers, uh, you all know a lot more than I knew in in uh, my in the period of time y'all been around. Y'all got much more. If you was around when I was a kid, I'd been sitting listening to your class because you guys are far ahead of than I was. Uh, brothers who's been around five years, you you are immensely immensely more prepared to do this work than I was five years in. Not even out, not even remotely close to um, two different eras and a whole lot more information. Um, Speeding, uh, the word is really uh, concentrated, and you're getting, but it's a, it, but that's danger too, because uh, um, it could be a novice lifted up in pride, and uh, what separates many brothers from um, brothers who've been around for a while is experience, and ex experience is invaluable, and experience only comes in time. It takes time to get it. And it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen in five and ten years. I'm telling you, you ten years in, you still a baby. I'm telling you, man. You, 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 I know when I was, you think you know, but you, you ain't. You don't live enough yet. You don't live enough yet to say you have that. Um, your full round. Now you can be ten years and be learnt. Don't get me wrong, but experience is the key to longevity in this truth because you learn how to um, navigate, and it will build your faith. Okay, so I left off in, um, what was the last thing I read? Uh, Hebrews? Oh, so let's go back to, um, did I read, hold on a second. Stay with me. In the meanwhile, can we pull up that uh, that video, I'm the Daddy? Uh, whatever video. Another video I'm talking about? Well, help, help us bring us to it so we can understand what the fuck that's about to happen. If, if you know the video, then you know what I'm talking about. It's but like, I don't, so I'm, that's what I'm a, asking you. It's a, it's a video of a little kid. Well, you've seen it before. His pants sagging. and he's like, I'm the daddy. Oh, yeah. I'm grown. <laughs> yeah, I see that and one He before. walks off. Yeah. Yeah, find <laughs> that. Mm hmm Let me see that one. You the other girl. You the mama. So, at least I'm the girl. At least I'm the girl. I'm the girl. Like, I'm the I'm the I'm the Stop hitting your chest, you're making a radio. That little boy scare me. That little boy scare me, man. We Damn. Yeah. I, that is the result of not the parents not knowing the commandments. That is the result of being I'm about to go on a limb on this one, guys. If I go too far, pull me back. I'm about to prophesy. Watch. 
His mother's a baby mama. His father's a baby daddy. Yep, that's about right, I bet you. Wow, that was quite the tangent. Okay, that was a baby mama. Yeah, that was. That is not a mother, that's a baby mama. That mother is. Ha- she's at the club. She, right. She, she, Boom. Yeah, she's at. She's. At this at this stage of life, she should at least be going to um, Drake concerts. You know, she should be at the Drake concert by or now. Drake concert. Oh, Drake. Drake. Oh, the Drake. Yeah, she go. She go. <laughs> uh, you know, she. I think she's matured at least to Drake concerts. You know. Yeah. And some you know trap music. Yeah. 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 Right. Damn. She she gets the deluxe version of the album. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. She get the deluxe version. Got 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 that right. <laughs> Let's go to uh, First Timothy's five. That little boy's a monster. Damn, that's mad to say that he's a monster. I, I don't want to talk about that right now. Yo, if he's like that at that age, uh, yeah. I'm afraid to find out what he'll be like at 15. Mm-hmm. He'll talk. be he'll be that dude when you pull up at a gas station to get gas. You're like, nah, I'm just gonna go to the next gas station. Right. <laughs> stop here. Right. The dude had a Sprite bottle. Like he was already drinking lean. He was sipping lean it. <laughs> Go for first with these five. I gotta wrap this up. Time was so quick. Um, uh, first Timothy five and one. Uh, first Timothy chapter five and verse one. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any man have children or nephews. Let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Okay, I'm going to read this first. So when it says, rebuke not an elder. Okay, it's twofold. Elder in the church, yes, but it's talking about elderly people too. As young men, like myself. I'm a young man. Wow, I'm trying to put myself in that group. But there'll be somebody who come in here that's seen to me in age, maybe 70 years old, right? I'm an elder here in the church. But I still got to be respectful on how I talk to him. I'm not going to talk to him or, or, or a woman and be belittle them or talk to them like they had a child. I wouldn't talk to him like I would talk to a younger person. This is not talking about necessarily an elder in the church. Because the second part in verse 17, let the elders that rule well be, uh, be kind of worthy of double honor. That's those that rule well. Those are the elders of the churches. Here is an elder woman. He was telling Timothy because Timothy was a young man. Mm-hmm. So Timothy, you know, you, you got people in this congregation that are coming here. They like we have some brothers, like uh, <clears throat> use example, <clears throat> Captain Tazawana, T- Captain Kabash. They've been around since high school. They're captains now. Now you have somebody who come to truth that's 50, 60 years old. They're not to be talking to them like these people are 14 or 19. You know, you still you still be respectful. That was the uh, example that uh, Paul was giving Timothy on how to know how to deal with people um, and how to talk to them. And also, we read earlier, is that we are all subject one to another. So it does not give the leader carte blanche to be rude or disrespectful, uh, to belittle or make uh, uh, or make seem like the person's insignificant. Um, and you will only get that with elders or young men that are leaders without experience. You understand, the greater you are, the more humble you're to become. Now, here's a problem. Here's the mix right here, where it gets a little, uh, the waters get a little muddy in people's minds. Sirac. No, hold that. 2 Corinthians 7. A couple more scriptures, I'm done. 2 Corinthians 7. This is where it gets a little muddy in the mind of people, and they have problems um, navigating through it. 2 Corinthians 11, <clears throat> verse 7. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 7. I have committed an offense in abasing myself. Paul that... said, I have committed a mistake or offense by abasing myself. Abasing means he brought himself down to their level. Now, Paul was a mighty man. He said, I made a mistake. You know, um, 
uh, Bishop Nathaniel uh, said to me one time and says, familiar, say the word? Familiarity. Say it again. Familiarity. Familiarity breeds contempt. And that is a true statement. This is one of the problems that Paul had here. Second Corinthians seven, I mean eleven and seven. Read again. I have committed an, an I have committed an offense in abasing myself, that she might be exalted. He said, I base myself or I came down to your level to help exalt you up so you don't look at me as I'm better than you or something like that. So I kind of brought myself down to your level to got too familiar with you and now to help exalt you. Read on. Because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. Because I was preaching the gospel of God freely, so I kind of try to meet you down on your level. Mistake. Mistake was, when you do that, is that young spirits who are, who are inexperienced take that as an equal playing field. They forget the reverence or the respect. They see you as a friend above a leader. And you can't do that if you're trying to build a nation. There has to be structure. Now, it doesn't, again, I say, it doesn't mean you become um, beside yourself as a leader, but some people don't know how to balance that. You come down and you be too friendly with them and you make them think, then they start, then they start becoming opinionated and telling you. And you're like, oh, no, no, that's not how it goes. Watch this. Sirach, 32. The book of Sirach, 32, verse, start with verse 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, in verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. It says, speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and scarcely when thou art twice asked. What is the time to tell a young man to do? What does it try to tell the young man to do? Listen. Yeah. Uh, what word would I use? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Say, shut up. Read on. Speak thou, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Right. Speak. If there's a need for you to speak, not don't speak because you want to speak. Speak because you know what? Hey guys, there's a freight truck coming and you don't see it. Move out the way. Speak if there's a need for you to speak. Sometimes people are young, you get this word in, and now you think you got something. You don't got nothing to say, ma'am. Trust me, save yourself the headache and the embarrassment. The worst thing you can have is a young man that learned a couple of scriptures and now all of a sudden now he wants to counsel everybody. He wants to bring up. Man, be quiet. You're going to say something stupid. You're going to say something that's not scriptural. It's all right. Your, turn, your time ain't come yet. Just be patient. It'll come. Let's start talking about the flat earth, you know. <laughs> I just fought this chair. <laughs> Read on. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. And when you ask, you make your words short, scarcely. Like they got to force you to want to speak. I ask you a question. You hear me? I ask you a question. Oh, okay. Man, can you talk? Yeah. And then when you do get that opportunity to talk, you better wow it with wisdom. It better be straight wisdom that you jump back and say, damn, I can't. The sun is shining on you with God's glory. Because damn it. Fools, this is irksome. A dumb talk is like, oh, God. You had an opportunity to talk, and what are you talking about? Fortnite. Oh, God. <laughs> Stab me in the heart. I don't know. Get the opportunity to talk. You're talking about Eminem and rap battle. We're gonna practice with you. Have you? You know what? I think your gift is to learn sign language. <laughs> Read. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Listen what it says. Let thy speech be short. Don't talk a lot. 
and learn the skill where you can comprehend a lot of information in a couple words, where people don't have to keep on repeating themselves to you. That's how wisdom is going to be seen in you when you can say, you know what? Don't have to say much to this brother. He gets it. Hey, you know what you did? Yeah, I get it. Okay, he got it. I don't have to keep. But when you got to start spelling, okay, do you know what you did is wrong? Do you need me to hold your hand and tell you you need to be at the school on time? On time is it starts at 7 a.m. That means you cannot show up at 7 o'clock. You have to show up before 7 o'clock. And before does not mean 6.59 because you have to open the door. So you should be here. If you got like that, you're never going to be a leader. I'm telling you that now. You're never going to be a leader. When people, as far from a position leader, when you got to talk to me like that, you're like, okay. Uh, he fits in a box, and that's who he's going to be. Comprehend a lot. It starts 7 o'clock. Well, I'm going to be here no later than 6.30. I shouldn't have to tell you. Just know we start at 7 o'clock. Figure it out. Now, if you could be here at 659 and get everything going by 7, great are you. But if 7 won't come and I'm ready and you're not ready, then you don't, I got to hold your hand. If that's the case, we got a problem. I'm not talking about you brothers here because you've got this here. You guys come here, these, I don't even think you guys go home to houses. I asked Kamal, I said, what time do these guys get here? Said, There's no time. I know I'm, but damn, they texting me at, Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> What's the title? I don't know. I don't have a class. We need a title. We need a title. Go ahead. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. Now you're a bad young man when you know and you can hold your tongue. That'll show wisdom. Remember I said wisdom is silence. Wisdom is found in silence. <laughs> and people don't know sometimes saying nothing. You say a lot when you say nothing sometimes. You just know you was like. Read on. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. There you go. If you're among great men, don't make yourself equal with them. Always concede to the man that's that senior to you. Oh, that's what's going to make you a great leader. When you're around great men, don't try to make yourself equal with them. You're trying to be in the same place, do the same thing they're doing. No, there's a reason why. Whatever reason why God has it the way it is, so be it. Read on. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. And when ancient men are in place. I told brothers before, when I first uh, came in, um, I think, well, outside of Passover duty, I was on a cleanup duty. And I was around for maybe three years by now. But they didn't even know my name. That didn't even know. <laughs> I was around. He, I, he knew me by face because I was in the class regularly. He didn't know my name. He wasn't talking. He didn't have nothing to say. My job was cleaning up. He clean up, move that, grab that, clear the table off. And then maybe about, I say about three years, and maybe the first two years he didn't know my name. I don't want to go that far, but maybe the first two years. Uh, but by the third year, now nah, I'm around. I'm a regular. My face is being seen. The men under him knew who I was. And what I used to do, th th this is a little different. But our podium was, after you clean up whatever, we used to sit right here at the edge of the podium. But you could see, like it was, it was different where you could see. Or the podium was, was larger, I, whatever the case may be. And then you sat there, and you, you know, I grabbed my plate of food, and brothers who cleaned up, we sat, and we ate right there. And then we could hear their conversation. And after sitting there for a while, they wasn't talking to us. They were talking amongst themselves. But after a period of time, the conversation kind of merged to us because we were around so much that we sat there that you kind of were brought. Now, I was a grown man. I wasn't no child like I was 15 when I came. I was 20-something years old. I was 25, 26. It's grown. But I knew to shut the hell up. I didn't talk. But when I did have the opportunity to talk, no, I said, <laughs> I didn't say no dumb stuff. Because if you said something dumb, that would more than likely been the last time you would have talked there. You know, like, you know, sit in the back by the bathroom someplace. But you don't make yourself equal to them. And in that, honor will come in your time. Uh, read on. Verse 10. Before the thunder goeth lightning, 
and before a shamefaced man shall go favor. Right? Before a shamefaced man shall go favor. So if you if you are a disrespectful, rude person, you ain't shamefaced, you will not get favor. A shamefaced man, then favor will come about. Read on. Rise up. T- rise up betimes, and be not the last, but get thee home without delay. We don't. Take, therefore, take thy pastime, and do what thou wilt, but sin not by proud speech. We don't. And for these things, bless them that made thee, and hath replenished thee with his good things. We don't. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. And they that seek him early shall find favor. And then who those that seek him early shall find favor. If you believe, taketh heed to what you've heard and apply it. Okay, so with that, we'll stop today. <laughs>